Hello and uh, welcome to this video. This is a pre-recorded webinar that is for the unit three um, case study for the level three certificate in personal training. So as part of your e-learning, if you scroll down to um, unit three, first of all, there's a manual and a worksheet. The worksheet is required to be submitted at some point. So please make sure you, you download, save that and submit that somewhere. But the point of this brief video is just to uh, reiterate what's required for the case study. So under these, this unit three, you've got um, 10 documents, obviously labeled one to nine and the final ones hasn't got a number on. All the ones labeled one to nine, you are required to complete and submit. In addition to that, there are some example documents here, which we'll briefly look at towards the end as well. So first of all, if you open um, all of these in order, if you like, so at the top, we've got your case study guidance. So um, it says that there's um, a minimum mark requirement. So please make sure you're aware of the marks required, which is in the case study marking criteria, which we'll go through. You need to select a client to work with uh, for the eight week predictive progressive program. So first of all, because it's a predictive progressive program, you're not expected to actually work with this person for eight weeks. But we do recommend that you choose somebody who you know just so you um, so you don't have to invent a person essentially. You know, if you can base it on someone that you know quite well and you know their lifestyle, you know what they want to achieve, then hopefully it makes the process a little bit easier. Um, but also um, for good practice, if you actually want to use this person, um, gather some information about them and start offering personal training for them, then obviously that's quite a good practice for you um, before you actually start personal training. And there's then a step here for carry out appropriate screening with your client. So as well as the use of the PAR queue and the informed consent form, you're also required to take and interpret at least two physical measurements. So these measurements, ideally, I would recommend are specific to what your client wants to improve on. So if your client has good blood pressure and they don't really want to improve on it, then don't take blood pressure. If they, if they do, then use blood pressure. If they want to lose weight, then you might want to measure height and their weight so you can calculate BMI. Or if they want to lose weight, you might want to gather uh, their body composition. If they want to get fitter, you might want to do a cardiovascular fitness test. If you want to be more flexible or stronger, then do a flexibility or a muscular strength and endurance test. So make sure that the tests and the results that you do are specific to what your client wants to achieve and to what the case study and the program cards are going to be aimed towards. Uh, step three is to carry out an interview with your client and be able to gather all this information. Now the documents that we give you, as long as you answer these questions and the documents accurately and correctly, then you should gather all of this information. Um, you then go on to step four, where you need to agree some SMART goals. Um, and in particular, there needs to be a combination of physical activity, lifestyle, nutrition, and adherence goals. So don't just set the same goal over the same, you know, for in four weeks, lose four pounds, in eight weeks, lose eight pounds, in 12 weeks, lose 12 pounds. That doesn't really give the client any sort of behavior change goals or support goals. So you need to think about their lifestyle and how you can support them as a personal trainer. And once you've agreed these factors, you can then start to design their program, um, or first of all, their macro cycle, it's like an eight week plan. And you can then start to write their programs for week one onwards, for week four onwards, making sure that you use a variety of cardiovascular machines, resistance machines, and free weights. So, First of all, there's no criteria here in terms of which exercises you must or must not use. It is totally up to you as the personal trainer to choose the most appropriate exercises. However, for assessment purposes, we do need to see a range of exercises. Um, but it's not like a level two, for example, where you normally um, are told to use from a list. So you can be a little bit more, um, use your own imagination and what you have available in your gym. But throughout the eight week, case study you need to make sure that you use at least two cardiovascular approaches and those two cardiovascular approaches need to come from this list of three so you need to use intervals fartlek or continuous if you want to use all three over eight weeks that's fine but you need to use a minimum of two and obviously show a logical progression in their use whether it's um, by intensity duration or the change in training method itself in addition to the cv training methods, you also need to use at least four of the resistance training approaches. Um, and they list which approaches you can use. So you need to use pyramids, supersets, giant sets, triceps, force reps, 
pre or post exhaustion, but only one will count. Um, and then negative slash eccentric training. And there is a bit of a get out here where you can use a muscular strength, endurance or muscular fitness training method. So this can be any other recognized training system that isn't listed above as long as it's recognized. So it could be circuits training. It could just be your classic basic sets of so three sets of six or three sets of 10. It could be drop sets, it could be matrix, sometimes known as 21s. Or there are a few on our website, such as German volume training, escalating density training, complex training, contrast training. However, you need to use at least three of these methods and only one of these. So at the very minimum, if you don't use these four, you need to make sure that you use three from this list and then anything else can then top it up. Um, again, if you want to use more than four over the duration of your case study, then that's fine. You'll be covering your bases as long as you don't contradict yourself. Throughout your case study, you also need to use at least one core stability exercise. Again, we would expect the core exercise to be progressed throughout the eight-week period. It can be just one exercise that, get, that gets progressed over the weeks. Or if you want to kind of show development, uh, development by changing your exercise choice, then that's up to you as well. It's up to you how you want to progress your case study. Uh, the number of machines slash pieces of equipment you choose will depend upon your client's needs. However, every program should contain, um, sorry, start again. Your case study should contain your client analysis, an eight week program, two program cards, um, and evidence of you evaluating and modifying. So, um, and with that, each program card should contain a warm up, a main CV section, a main resistance, uh, resistance section, one core stability exercise, and then a cool down with appropriate timings and sequences, in particular, uh, for your training methods. So if you're trying to do supersets, for example, we'll expect those two exercises to be back to back, etc., and so forth. Um, so please note that if one of your client's goals is you know, just to get stronger or just to get bigger, we still require them to perform some cardiovascular exercise as it's about promoting a healthy lifestyle approach to their training. Equally, if somebody just wants to run a marathon, then again, we, we need them to be doing some resistance training. And hopefully you can justify why that's beneficial for them, whether it's injury prevention or improving performance or just for longevity of their sport and their life. Um, so there's guidance there, but essentially if you complete all the documents provided, you, um, and, you well, and you do it accurately and correctly, then you should cover the criteria. <coughs> Excuse me. So first of all, there's a PAR-Q. Um, so uh, before you download, uh, sorry, before you complete any of these documents, please make sure that you download them and save them somewhere locally on your laptop and then fill them out. If you fill them out online and then save it, it will wipe it clean when it saves it. So make sure you download the documents, please. But once you have, the documents should be editable, so you can tick you know, accordingly, no, 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 no. And once they've done that, you should be able to write the name. Uh, don't worry about a signature in that box. Uh, just put the date on, and that should be fine. Um, and then following that, there is a health commitment statement, just as that's kind of common practice in the industry. So that's your PACU, just to confirm that person's fit and healthy to participate. There's then a client interview. So uh, this is where you're going to gather your client's name, their telephone number, their date of birth, and two physical measurements. Now, we've said make sure their physical measurements are linked to their goals and what they want to achieve, but also um, make sure you show your understanding. So if you do give a BMI, don't just write BMI 28. That doesn't show us that you understand how to calculate a BMI. So we would expect you to write their height in meters, which could be something like 1.8, and then their weight in kilograms that could be something like 98 and then from there you will have to calculate their BMI so and show your understanding on how to do that if you did do BMI then I would guess also um, that that person may be looking for weight loss so you might want to do something else that would facilitate weight loss whether that's body fat percent uh, body fat percentage um, using calipers or weighing scale whether you want to do some sort of CV fitness test or you might want to do a strength test alternatively. Just um, just make sure that the results of those tests, again, you not you don't necessarily need to do the test because it's a predictive case study, but you might want to look at the testing um, or the test results at the end of your unit free manual and say, no, currently my client has this level of fitness and you might want to base it on like the, the 12 minute Cooper test or 
a five rep max strength test or something like that so you can say what their current actual results are. In addition, you then need to say what your client's personal fitness goals and aspirations are. So that's where you can just explain to us what their goals are. So if are they wanting to lose weight, are they wanting to feel healthier, are they wanting to gain weight, be stronger, are they wanting to train for a specific event or just for their general health and well-being. So just explain you know, their goals and aspirations. Explain how many times a week they can commit. So is it twice, three times, five times a week? Can they train 30 minutes a session or 60 minutes a session? Um, how much, um, and in particular, they might be something like 30 minutes a session during the week, but an hour at the weekend. Where you're listing their occupation, don't just say what they do, such as manager. That could be anything. So explain in terms of are they physically active? Are they sat down all day? Um, is it Monday to Friday, nine till five? Or is it shift work? And that's where, again, you can put in there. And just like the challenges that they may have or the barriers or things to consider in their life, um, that could affect your programming and how you're going to support them as a PT. Briefly describe your current eating patterns. So um, a good guidance here is to kind of go through the main meals of the day. So you know, ask them what they usually eat for breakfast, ask, ask them what they usually eat for lunch, what they usually eat for tea, um, what do they snack on in between those meals. And once you've got an insight into that, you can then cover the eat well uh, plate or the eat well guide in terms of do, are they eating five portions of fruit and veg a day? Are they eating two portions of fish a week, one of them being oily? Are they drinking enough water? Are they getting starchy carbohydrates? Are they getting good proteins? Are they getting good fats? And hopefully from gathering that information and, get, and having a bit of a dialogue with somebody, you should be able to pick out what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are in terms of, you know, how could you improve their diet? Um, and then also just a little bit here in terms of, you know, what does your client want to achieve? You know, do they want to feel healthier? Do they want the diet to be more structured? Do they want to feel like they're in control and they know and they understand what they're eating and why? So just cover a bit there. Um, and then do you have any particular personal circumstances? So that could be linked to their diet. So it could be things like allergies or, you know, preferences. I uh, you know they don't like um, the taste or the texture of a certain food and stuff like that. Or it could also be more personal, such as like job, kids, you know, dependency they've got to look after, um, anything like that as well. What type of exercise do you currently do and how often? So try and use the acronym FIT, so frequency, intensity, time and type. You can cover that. Um, as well as what type of exercise do they enjoy? And when, when you cover that, don't just put kind of cardio or weight. Try and explain if it's cardio, you know, is it indoor running, outdoor running? Do they like to do the rower, the cross trainer? Do they like to do continuous training or intervals? If they're lightweight training, do they like to use machines or free weights? Do they like to lift heavy or lift light? Do they like circuits? So try and give a bit of an explanation because it helps you um, analyze what they like and what they may need and therefore you can write a better program and support them better. Um, also here, gather anything that they dislike and why they dislike it. So they might not dislike anything, they might be open to everything. However, if they do dislike something, just find out why, because quite often if if they don't like a treadmill because it hurts the knees, then that could be a valid reason and you might need to adapt to that. However, if they don't like the treadmill because the last time they went on it, they um, a personal trainer got them to train too hard and it made them sick, then obviously that's just a bad experience that shouldn't have happened. and. Hopefully with your guidance and your support, you might be able to change their perception on that, that exercise in particular, you know, it could be quite useful for them if they were trying to get better at running, then obviously they need to be on the treadmill or something like that. So just find out why, and as long as you can justify why, or you, know, you, might, you might need to educate them on how you could train with them still, potentially. So that's your client interview, and then there's also a client analysis. So client analysis is more about their kind of behavior and attitude and motivation. So. Briefly summarise your client's attitude and motivation towards exercise. So, essentially, do they want to be there or not? So, you know, try and explain. Yeah, my, my client's very motivated. They're ready to make a change. They're willing to make some sacrifices, and they understand that they, you know, that they're going to have to do some things to to get the result they want. Or are they quite low in like motivation or esteem, and they might need a bit more support? And you need to really, you know, give them some very simple, basic advice to begin with um, to support them. Uh, list your current barriers, perceived or actual. So, you know, real barriers could be something like, oh, sorry, actual barriers could be something like, you know, time. If if they're working a lot and they've got kids or dependents that they need, need to look after, they may struggle to to find the time. 
or things like perceived could be things more like anxiety or self-esteem, just confidence in the gym. Uh, but whatever they list, and we do need to have one here because most people have a barrier and you need to get a mark for this question, so you need to list something. Offer ways of how you can overcome that barrier. So you know, if they don't want to go to the gym when it's busy because they're lacking confidence, then could you get them to come at off-peak hours when it's quieter and there won't be as many people in? Could you train them in a, diff in a different part of the gym? Uh, do they, they take uh, their clothes to work in their car so on the way home? they can stop off at the gym rather than go home and pick up the, the, the gym gear because they're more likely to stay at home and stuff like that. So whatever their barriers are, make sure you give a suitable method of overcoming those barriers. What stage of readiness is your client currently at? So your stage of readiness is in your manual, so it's also on our CMS Fitness Courses page, so www.cmsfitnesscourses.co.uk. If you go to the blog and search stage, it should, should, it should pop up. But you need to show kind of where your client is at in regards to um, their engagement and motivation with exercise. If they're just starting, they are gonna be in action or pre-contem or contemplation. So they know they're just starting and you need to explain what leads you to that conclusion. If they've been regularly attending the gym for three times a week for at least six months, they may be in maintenance and you just need to be able to explain that. So obviously read around the stage of readiness, state what stage they are at and then explain how you came to that conclusion. So there is guidance in your manual and your uh, and our website if you need that. And then finally, based on the information you've got, whether it's the nutrition goals, the lifestyle goals, um, obviously what their ultimate goal is, what they want to achieve, as well as anything else that you pick up, you should be able to set some goals. So we would recommend that you give at least two goals um, for every duration. So there's a, at least two goals for a short, medium and long. And if you want to do more, feel free. And your long-term goals would be more adaptation goals. So that's where you might be talking more about weight loss or weight gain or fitness slash strength adaptations. So if your client wants to lose weight, you know that's where you can put you know lose lose twelve pounds in sixteen weeks. Or it could be to um, gain five pounds in twelve weeks if you're looking for weight gain. It could be to increase. Um, the distance they can run in 20 minutes from 3.5 kilometers to 4 kilometers to improve their 5 rep max um, deadlift from 100 kilograms to 105 kilograms in 12 weeks. So that's the sort of thing where you know that's their ultimate long term goal but for them to achieve that you need to give them some behavior goals so that's what your short and your medium term goals are for. So your short term goal could be as something as simple as go to the gym three times a week for the next four weeks because as long as your client does that the chances are they'll be doing something in the gym and they'll be working towards their goal um, but could you also give them a nutrition goal so based on the information that you've gathered previously could you say well you know you don't drink enough water so could you drink two liters of water every day for the next week and that would be a good short-term goal the medium-term goal again it could be more lifestyle based it could be walk your dog every day uh, for at least 20 minutes, 60 minutes at the weekend um, for the next eight weeks. So make sure you put that time frame on. Could it be something like attend one spin class um, a week for the next eight weeks? Could it be a nutrition goal about increasing fruit and vegetables or decreasing takeaways or improving uh, breakfast and things like that? And then hopefully by doing these three or four actions, the five or six actions that you're going to set them, they will achieve their long-term goal. Um, and any nutrition goals that you do set them, because you do need to set some nutrition goals here, then justify why you have set them. So if you are telling them to eat more fruit, or you're setting them a goal, should I say, to eat more fruit and vegetables, and it might be eat two more pieces of fruit every day for the next four weeks, that would be a smart goal. Just explain why in here. So why do you want them to eat more fruit? Why do you want them to eat two more pieces of fruit every day? Explain what is in fruit and why it's useful for them. It will, you know, the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, the good carbohydrates, how it could help with energy and sensible snacking. Why do you want them to drink more water? What's the benefit of that? Why do you want them to have breakfast? Why do you want them to decrease the processed carb intake and increase the protein intake? So anything that you suggest in there, you just need to be able to show your understanding of why you're saying that. So you, you know, you're showing your underpinning knowledge. 
and they are your three main documents to kind of screen your clients. So you've got your par queue, your client interview, and then your client analysis. It hopefully doesn't take as long as me having to explain it. Um, you've then got an eight week macro cycle. So this is where you can kind of plan what you're going to do with your clients. So you know, if your client's a beginner and they want to stay in endurance for the full eight weeks, that's fine, they can stay in endurance. If they are suitably trained and they want to improve strength and they're already strength trained, then you could start in strength and stay in strength. Or if you want to be in endurance for four weeks and then drop into hypertrophy for four weeks, that's fine. What we would look for is that whatever you're suggesting fits into their to the information that you've gathered in their screening documents. So if someone's a complete beginner and you're suggesting that they start in the strength phase, then we would question the efficacy and the safety of that. Whereas if you said that your client was well trained and wanted to improve strength and you started them in the endurance rep range, then again, we could question the efficacy of it. Um, below that is your cardio. So again, very similar, you can kind of explain what training methods you might want to use, what duration, and kind of what in, um, what intensities, if I didn't just say that. <laughs> um, and then hopefully that gives you a bit of a plan for the eight weeks. You can then give a bit of an overview. So um, this is just a blank document, but this is where we want you to give us a bit of an overview on who your client is, you know, their background, what they want you to achieve. And then off the back of that, explain why you've planned what you've planned so what are you expecting to achieve in week one week two week three and week four based on the program that you write what are you expecting them to achieve in weeks five six seven and eight based on the program that you've written um, and by doing that you should be you, again you're just justifying what training methods and what uh, reps and sets you're prescribing to them just point out that these two documents in particular, the macro cycle and the eight week overview, there are example documents on your e-learning. So that's where we'll look at them in a second, but there's um, an eight week overview example here, a macro cycle example and a program card and an additional stretches example as well. So when it comes to your program card, uh, so start again, your program cards, they look like this. So make sure you cover information such as health and safety checks, checking equipment, first aider, um, fire exits, things like that. Any special arrangements, whether the client's a bit tired, they've got a bit of a cold, any kind of adaptations you might need to be aware of. And then just the location of the first aider, the telephone and the first aid kit. And then you need to write your program, making sure that you offer a warm up, a main CV, um, a balanced program using the relevant training methods. So if you're doing pyramids or supersets, but in particular, um, in your teaching points, you need to explain how to use the training system. So it's not teaching points, for example, if you're doing a squat and you chose to do a pyramid and you're doing three sets of, you know, you're doing a set of 12, a set of 10 and a set of eight. In the teaching points, don't explain to us how to perform the squat. We assume that you know how, already how to do that based on your level two knowledge. What we'd expect is how to perform the training method. So explain in the box how to perform pyramids. If you were to do supersets, list two exercises, either in one box, so it can be kind of two like that, just for space, or if you wanted to put one in the box below, that's fine. But if you were to use supersets there, explain in this box how to perform supersets, because if your client reads this when you're not there, they need that kind of guidance and support. There's then a box for your cool down CV, and then there's um, a couple of boxes to list what warm up and cool down stretches you'd perform. Um, obviously for your warm up, you need to do some mobility and static stretches. And then for your cool down, you need to do some static stretches. Um, and you can also give some additional advice and guidance to your client in terms of what could they do out of the gym. So if they like to walk the dog, if they like to go swimming, if they want to join a running club, anything like that, that might just promote them to achieve their goals. And then anything else that you might want to list in here in terms of precautions or comments. Um, please note for your program cards, you do need to submit diagrams of your stretches. Now, if you print this paperwork, you can draw them in. However, if it's online or electronic, you can't import images into a PDF. So that's where we recommend you use this stretch example here, just to show you this, where you could create a Word document and just insert the name of the stretches that you plan on doing. So you know, two or three dynamics, maybe three or four statics for your warm up, 
three or four statics for your cool down, include a picture, how many reps or how long you need to hold them for, and then some teaching points again. So in your actual program card, it might just be the list of exercises, but if you submit an, an additional document for the images, I'm afraid that's a requirement. And then finally, there's an evaluation um, at the week four point. So it's up to you whether you want to be positive or negative, so you can tick yes or no. Has your client managed to adhere to the program? Yes. Uh, you can say that your client's absolutely loving it. They managed to, um, you know, they enjoy the program. It's achievable. They feel like they're progressing. How is your client progressing towards their agreed physical and nutritional goals? That like they're doing absolutely fantastic. You know, they're losing weight. They're getting fitter. They're getting stronger. Are there any aspects of the program that you need to modify or revise? Then yes, because the, otherwise they might plateau. So you need to kind of keep them progressing. What modifications do you do you intend to make? And that's where you can explain whether you're gonna or what you will change as part of the cardiovascular or the resistance training sections. And whatever you suggest here should then map into the next program card. So if you're saying that you're gonna progress from using supersets onto triceps, then we would we, we would expect triceps to be in your next program card. And then following that, that is where you would then do a second program card to show that knowledge and understanding. Once you've completed all those documents, there is a, a case study marking criteria. So if you want to double check that you will be fulfilling all the requirements, you can just double check to make sure that you've um, you've covered all these points. Please note there's not many points or marks that you can drop. So you do need to get full marks in some of the tasks, um, but some of them you can drop a few marks. And that's just for your reference. You don't need to fill anything in there. So if you just go back to your e-learning, there's the documents one to nine. The Number one is just a guidance document. You then need to complete numbers two to nine and the case study marking criteria is for your reference. Down below here, there is a program card example where you can see um, examples of how we would want a program card to look and what sort of detail in there. So please pay reference to that. Obviously, it's not a full program card, otherwise there's not much of a challenge for yourself, is there? Um, and there is also an eight week overview and an eight week macro example where you can kind of see the guidance that we would expect in there and just a bit of an example as well. Please submit all, um, all your case study documents together. We can't mark just one document at a time. We, can, we kind of need to view them all together so we can assess it and see it together. Okay, thank you very much, cheers.